boy and girl I believe it, I believe it Step by step we can change this world I believe it, I believe it I have a dream that is bigger than me But if I have faith and believe Anything is possible even when Chicken Nuggets, it's me, Carl. And I'm Andy, and welcome to Grow TV. Hi, uh, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome. So, Carl, guess what I did today? You became a licensed therapist. Nope. You became the number one artist on country music charts. Nope. Did you... Wait. No. What? There's no way! You couldn't have! What? Did you undergo surgery to replace your human heart with a tortoise heart so you could live twice as long? Yes! Yes, I did! What? Are you serious? No. I did something almost just as cool. I got us a plan. What? Like a fern? No, not a plant, a plan. And it's plans to build something extremely cool. The biggest paper airplane to ever exist. What? 
You know the thing I love more than airplanes is paper. This is great. So what do we have to do? Well, like I said, I have the plans right here. So all we have to do is follow the plans perfectly and then voila, we have the perfect paper airplane. Seriously? That's it? Let's look at the plans. All right. Here it is, right? It's just right in here, right in here. Here we go. Anywhere. That's right a here. lot of plans. Yeah. Right there, it's not that big, right? Wow. Is that all? Yep. All right, well, it kind of looks a little confusing, but I guess we can give it a shot. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna say it. This is kind of weird paper airplane. Now I'm gonna, I'm, I don't think this is what it's supposed to look I like. I know that, Andy. Maybe we should try it again. There's no point, this plane is junk. Why can't my life be more like Jesus? What do you mean by that? Well, Jesus never had planes fall through like this. Well, that's not true. Do you remember the story about Jesus getting angry in the temple? It sounds familiar. What happened? Well, Jesus was going to Jerusalem to go to the temple and he found out people weren't sticking to the plan. Wait, whose plan? God's. Oh. What were they doing? Oh, where they were exchanging money and they were selling animals. Well, was that bad? Well, not technically, but they were doing it in the temple, which means they should have been celebrating the Passover instead. All right, hold on, you lost me. Passover? It was a time where all the Jewish people would come together in the temple and they would celebrate the time and remember the time that God delivered all the Israelites out of Egypt. Oh, got it. So them selling and exchanging things on the Passover wasn't part of the plan or God's plan. Exactly, and when Jesus got really upset, he started to turn over the tables and tell everyone to leave. But some of the people were wondering why Jesus even thought he had the authority to tell them to leave. Oh good, question the son of God. That's a good move. So Jesus told him that he would destroy the temple and then rebuild it three days later. A lot of people got confused when he said that. I can imagine. I know he's like Jesus and everything, but building that temple in that short time? I mean, that'll at least take, I don't know, seven to 10 business days? Well, it actually took them 46 years to build the temple, but that's not the point Jesus was trying to make. Jesus was trying to tell them that he was the plan going forward, that their old plans weren't what they should be trusting in. Oh, well, what old plans? The ones where they try to fix all of the brokenness on their own. When Jesus said he was gonna rebuild the temple in three days, he was talking about himself. He said he had the power to bring himself back to life after three days, and his life would bring everyone else life. Wow, so Jesus was talking about his life would be exchanged for ours the whole time. Yes, and to put it simply, Jesus was hinting at God's big plan. Wait, so Jesus dying for our sins was God's plan? Sure was, it was the only way we could receive forgiveness and repair our relationship with God. Holy moly, that's wild. So I guess God's plan did work out the way it was supposed to, unlike our paper airplane. Exactly, and that's why I wanted to tell you this story. God's plan never fails. Like Jesus, right? What? Like God's plan never failed for Jesus, but for others it might fail sometimes, right? No, God has a specific and unique plan for each and every person out there, and it's better than any plan we could ever make for ourselves. So God's plan is nothing like the paper airplane plan. Nothing, God's plan is perfect. Wow, speaking of perfect, that's our big idea! What? Today's big idea is God's plans are perfect. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, Three. God's, God's plans, plans are perfect. perfect! Yeah, they sure are. God has a perfect plan. It is perfecto. That is Spanish for perfect. perfect. Yep. Bilingual. Yay. C. So I'm really sorry I got your hopes up about the airplane plans. Um, I really thought it would be you know, cool. It just was confusing. <sighs> no worries. I couldn't understand it either. Yeah. Wait a minute. What? Oh no. It was upside down the whole time! Oh. We are foolish. Okay, well. Do you, do you led me astray. See you next week, kids. <laughs> uh, Sorry. I apologize. It's fine, it's I didn't fine. know. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. Miss Veronica here, and I am so excited to be here with you today. You may be wondering why I'm wearing this outfit. Well, we are in week one of a new series called Blueprints, and it's kind of a construction theme, and it's going to be so much fun. Blueprints are a kind of plan that helps engineers, architects, and drafters know how a project should go. Plans are everywhere. 
You can find plants at school. You can find them in your Lego sets at home. You can even find them in video games. But the best kinds of plants are the ones that help us grow. This month, we will be focusing on some of the teachings that Jesus did while he was here on earth with us. I wanna show you something. Do you see this? You see that? Can anyone tell me what this blueprint is for? Those are some great answers. This is actually the blueprint for Cinderella's castle at Disney World. Pretty amazing, right? Do you think that you could take this blueprint and build a castle yourself? <laughs> well, as many of you may know, this is what the actual castle looks like. These pictures show the same thing, but it takes a very special set of instructions to get from one to the other. In our lives, sometimes the blueprints are confusing. That's when we can rely on God to give us the instructions we need because God's plans are perfect. I hope you remember from Carl that that's our big idea. Can you say it with me? Ready, go. God's plans are perfect. Great job, friends. Our Bible story today is about a time when Jesus finds people that are not following God's plans in a very sacred place. And Jesus gets visibly upset and takes action. We'll talk more about our story in a minute. Our memory verse this month is one that you may have heard before, and it's one of my favorites. It's Jeremiah 29 11. I'm gonna say it once and then we can say it together, okay? For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Let's say it together. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now that is Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay, before we go, will you please pray with me? Let's bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for showing us your plans through the words you gave us. We trust that your plans are perfect and they will give us hope even when things are not going great. Help us follow your plans. We love you so much, God. Amen. Okay. I hope you have a fantastic week and join us for all the great things coming this month. Remember that we love you so much, Jesus loves you, and that you are a blessing. Bye, friends. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Wow, what a great morning. Before we go, Lucy and I have just one more thing that we need to do. Everybody come and bring your foreheads or your hands close to the screen for your blessing. Friends, you are a blessing and so, so very loved by God and by your church family. We hope that you have an amazing week. We'll see you next time.